I don't like the sound of my own voice. You have an incredible voice. That's what the people say. Yeah, and the people don't lie. Just, have you noticed that people on Instagram don't lie? No, they're they really, don't give compliments. They're really unless it's mean. Really do. I had a really mean lady the other day, just oh. really lean into me. Oh. She called my hands Cheeto dusted black roaches. <laughs> it was like kind of funny, but I was also like, you could use this like for good. <laughs> like you're pretty creative. You gonna call me fat? I've made so much money being fat. Well, you can't hurt my feelings. <laughs> I cash checks. That's fine. So what do you Oh wait, do, have we started? I don't know. Have we? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, that's how natural this is. I love it. I though have done the auto block. Have you ever done that on Instagram where you can auto block comments? No. Oh. Honey. Wait, how do you do that? You can block certain keywords oh. that if someone comments with a certain word in it, it's automatically blocked. So I blocked words like whore. Okay. Busted. Oh no. Busted whore. Oh no. Did you fuck Joe Rogan? To oh get on no. It? <laughs> like, it's you learn a lot about yourself when you start picking the My words that you auto block. I just it. I've never in my life mm-hmm. wanted to say something nasty to someone on social media. Yep. I feel like it should be illegal to comment anything other than you look wonderful or a variation of that. I was talking to my therapist, which unfortunately happens a lot. <laughs> And no, I, fortunately. Therapy <laughs> fortunately, is good. Yes, it is. It is medicine. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to her because there were some comments that were eating at me. Because mm-hmm. a couple people, I guess, banded together and all started making the same <sighs> comment after my last special came out. And uh, and I told her about it. And I was like, and this guy commented this mm-hmm. and this about my face and said I had plastic surgery and then called me a whore and da da da. And she just goes, wow, sounds like they're in a lot of pain. Mm hmm. And I was like, how dare you sympathize with these monsters? <laughs> but you do have to think, like, what? Yeah. how much pain must you yeah. be in? Like, you're very upset in order to say awful things like that. This dude, I read my DMs because I read nasty come-ons on my podcast from mm-hmm. the DMs. So this person was like, you're not funny, and I hate you. And I just wrote back. I was like, I hope that made you feel better, and I hope the rest of your day went well. I hope and it worked. he commented back, you know what? I was having a really terrible day. I hope you keep making people laugh, but not me. <laughs> <laughs> and it made me laugh <gasps> so hard. I respect the consistency. Right? Well, there's also this new thing that I guess social media has uh, illuminated, like, I don't need to be for everyone. No. The idea that, like, we need to be everybody's cup of tea is just so wild. Insane. It's a very strange way to think. Uh, I keep getting asked about, like, cancel culture and stuff like that in interviews. And I was like, yeah, I don't like cancel culture. You don't have to like someone's full special. No. You can like 90% of it. Yeah. And not cancel the whole thing. Yeah. You can just go, 90% of it was for me, 10% was not. So uh, (laughs) I respect the work you put in to put out an hour of original material. Nobody's really talking about that. I mean, social media is such an addiction. It mm-hmm. does give us dopamine. Our dopamine receptors mm-hmm. make dopamine, or you get adrenaline, which turns into dopamine. Have, I do. Have you ever tried to turn your phone onto grayscale? I have. It's upsetting. It doesn't last very long. No, because the dopamine doesn't happen. That's right. So for those of you who don't know what she's talking about, this is a brilliant trick mm-hmm. that makes you a little less addicted to your phone. Yes. Because you, part of what's so addicted and, and sexy about it are the mm-hmm. colors. If you put it in grayscale, which I think is maybe applications, uh, it's, uh, we'll put they it in. They make it really hard to I find. know they do because they don't want you putting your phone mm-hmm. down. And then everything's in black and white. So it just becomes less yeah. of a treat. It's like reading a newspaper in yeah, your hand. Like, and you're like, I don't want uh, this. Yeah. But, but you know what's funny? Babies like bright colors. Yes. So we just never evolved past that. No. We're, we're just, just like big black babies colors, being like, oh, la, 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 la. But negativity, especially self righteous indignation, is a drug. And we're all high. I, on it. Yes, I think so. Especially people on the left. They like really want to get offended about everything and then it's, get on this high horse and be very offended. And I'm like, okay. I've never seen, I mean, I, I don't know if this is new. I can't say. But it's like people want to be victims. Yeah. <laughs> they want to get hurt. Yeah. It's like, like I remember like five years ago noticing that people would brag about being sick. Oh. You'd be like, oh, my God, I'm so sick. Like, oh, my God, I, just, I couldn't sleep last night. They'd brag about how little sleep oh, they got. yes. And I was like, oh, it's almost like a Munchausen huh. thing where people are like, I'm discriminated against. It's like, uh-huh. are you a white woman, millionaire woman? <laughs> what? I'm so sorry. I'm confused. Like, what? I'm just so sorry. Yeah, I'm just like, trying to figure out how you're a victim. How, how, are, how is this been? I, I'm, I'm happy to hear you out, but like, what's going on? Um, Do you know Mateo Lane? 
Love him so much. I love him. Just a fan. So dearly. He's a dear friend of mine. And he's a comedian who has a very beautiful uh, body. His body is gorgeous. It's about time women objectify men, and I'm going to do it. Oh, all the time. Yeah. Whenever he's at my house, I'm like, take off your shirt. Yeah, that's true. A quality that men mm-hmm, get objectified mm-hmm. also. And he does it lovingly. Yes, he does. But he posted a picture and wrote Ola, and then someone was like, oh, another white dude appropriating culture. And he was like, I'm Mexican. <laughs> He's part Mexican. And I was like, this is so wild that somebody just got offended that he said hola. Even if he wasn't part Mexican, wow. hola just means hello in a different language. Wow. That's not appropriate. It's so nuts. So then I commented. I was like, you got to throw him in jail. It's terrible. <laughs> I got in trouble because I said at some like panel, uh, someone was a basket case. Mm-hmm. People came for me. Is that like a slur now? It is a, a, a basket is, case. It is in World War t- One or Two. If soldiers had lost all their limbs and could uh-huh. fit in a basket, oh no, they were called a basket oh, case. Oh, 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 <laughs> no. I was like, so I'm the one offending World War Two soldiers, I not mean, the Nazis. It's how me. on earth would you have known that? Didn't know. Look, I'm happy to course correct. I, uh-huh. The last thing I want to do is upset somebody. In my last special, I ended up cutting stuff out because I said Native American, and someone was like, "I think you have to say Indigenous people." And I was like, "You know what? Yeah, I'll I don't. I don't want to get this wrong. Yeah, they've had it bad enough. Yes. The last thing I need to do is make a joke. It's mm-hmm. insane. Like I just and I want it to hold up in ten years. Yes. So I'm happy to make concessions, but y'all like give an inch, take a mile. Now yeah. you're pushing it. Someone could have just pulled you aside and been like, do you know the origin of basket case? Yeah. And you could have been like, no. And then they could have told you. You've been like, that's wild. And you had it. It's super wild. Like, <laughs> now I know. Yeah. And now. Now I'll pick and choose when I say And, and also, I think I was calling myself a bad. Like, I'm insulting myself. But then also, don't colloquialisms maybe derive from something and then evolve into something else? I think we're all just okay? so addicted to the attention we are getting from, like, publicly shaming people I guess and embarrassing so. people. It's really, I it come sucks. from the I come from the codependent culture of if someone has food in their teeth, mm-hmm. you don't say something. Oh. Like, you never let, you never embarrass somebody publicly. Oh. So the, so the fact that everyone wants to just publicly See, shame. people like to do that loudly, but I'll just be a nice friend and be like, you got something. Yeah, I'll, like, pull people aside now. I used to get a pit in my stomach about the idea of telling someone, like, ugh. Wow. Yeah, no good. I used to get, like, because I don't want to embarrass somebody. That's my nightmare. Mm. The other day I used a lady's own finger to get lipstick off her teeth because it was too much for her to, like, just lick off. So I was just like, I'll let me (laughs) just That's a very basket case ass thing to do. I'm a real basket case. So I have this thing in my head that we're really close friends. (laughs) But, well, I like you a lot, but we don't hang out very often. We're literal strangers. <laughs> but I've been a fan for a long time, and I listen to your podcast, and I think we're very close, but I want to do this quiz with you that's okay. going to help me sort of understand a little bit more about you, and I'll tell you what it okay. means at the end. I'm okay. kind of doing it with all the guests. You need to tell me your favorite animal. My favorite animal? But not like your dog or a dog you have. No. The animal you admire. Your favorite animal? I think koala might be my favorite because they're really cute and cuddly, but they'll, like, claw your eyes out. Love it. I think, yeah. I didn't know that about koalas. Yeah, they're dangerous. Okay. You know, like, they have the little claws? I think those claws they use to kill people. Am I making this up? Does anyone know? (laughs) Am I right? I'm, right? Okay. I'm sure they'll let you know in the comments. You'll hear it soon oh, enough yeah. from People Cockroach like, Lady. Actually, the koalas are safe. You've appropriated Australian <laughs> culture with that accent. Um, three things to describe a koala. Cute, cuddly, claws your eyes out, dangerous. Mm-hmm. Um, anything else about them? Small. Small. I like that they're small. They're small, yeah, but cute and cuddly. Yeah. Okay. Favorite article of clothing. My favorite article of clothing. It was this tobacco-colored cardigan, but I lost it. I've seen that. I wear it a lot. Where do you lose it? I have no idea. This is heartbreaking. Yeah, it's having an it's article a of clothing. Sometimes I look at photos and I'll see like a sweatshirt I wore mm-hmm. for five years, and I don't know. And you're where like, it I is. don't know where it's at. But we tore, so it's in some yeah, bolted. I think it is covered in tears. Yeah. yeah. Three words to describe your tobacco-colored cardigan. Comfy, mm-hmm. a little tight, <laughs> uh, long enough to cover my butt. <laughs> so, like, um, uh, what's another word to describe that? Like, in one word, um, um, like not protective, tasty, no. Ta- <laughs> tasty. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> like it's, it's tasteful, tasteful. <laughs> I like it. 
And then your favorite body of water. It can be a swimming pool. It can be a specific lake. I picked the New River in West Virginia because I spent Mm -hmm. a lot of time there growing up, and I love it. I really like Barton Springs. Where's that? That's in Austin, Texas. But I also really just like the ocean. Okay. I love the ocean. And what are three things to describe the oceans of why you like it? Um, Scary. Ooh. Vast. Uh Uh-huh. And beautiful. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. So this is a... This is a test that Sigmund Freud came up with oh. that gives you an insight kind of into your subconscious okay. that kind of tells you about sort of who you are. Uh, I have a friend uh, who went to go interview at a rehab and they gave her this test. Mm. Like they give people these tests at a lot of like employment organization because you pretend in a job interview. Oh, you know, yeah, absolutely. This is a way to like get to the heart of something. want to get hired. Yeah. And um, so your favorite animal is koala. This is how you view yourself. Cute and cuddly, <laughs> but we'll claw some of that out. <laughs> I think that's pretty accurate. And dangerous. Yeah, I think that's pretty accurate. And small. Oh, well. <laughs> Your favorite article of clothing is how other people view you. Okay. Comfy, a little bit tight. <laughs> I'm assuming that's about your pussy. It's about my pussy. <laughs> and tasteful. Okay. And yeah. usually there's a big discrepancy between the way you perceive yourself and the way other people perceive you. You have a little one, cute and cuddly, mm-hmm. comfy. It seems you're very sane. You see yourself the same way other people see you, except well, for the eyes cloud. I've been to a lot of therapy. We're going to talk about that in so one So much therapy. I have questions, especially because ocean is uh, the favorite body of water is the way you view sex. For you, it's beautiful, <laughs> vast, and scary. Oh, no. Wow. <laughs> this is Pretty on spot, spot on, on pot, on pot. This is good for me. Is Nicole Byers speechless? I, I'm broken. Yeah, I mean, no major red flags though. Like the friend of mine that went to do the interview mm-hmm. at the um, rehab, they, she said her favorite animal was a cougar because they mm-hmm. pull their prey up into a tree so no one else can steal it. <laughs> they were like, "Yeah, you can't work here." That's perfect, but also. At a rehab, that means she wants to keep people safe. Yeah, that's a good point. I think they sh- they missed the mark. They saw it as a red flag. When did you start going to therapy? Um, the first time I went to therapy was family therapy because I was acting out. And they were like, you want attention, right? Which is not the way you give someone attention. Yeah. Like, that was just Shaming not them yes. for them wanting attention. Yeah. yeah. And then I went to therapy after my mom died. Mm-hmm. And I went to this therapist. How old were you? I was 16. She had bright, bright blonde hair, Mm -hmm. red lipstick, and then too many books on her bookshelf. Mm -hmm. And I was convinced that they were all fake. So I was (laughs) like, can't speak to her. Yeah. Uh, Then my next therapist was when I was in college. She was all the way in Brooklyn and she tried to hypnotize me. And I was still in this place where I was polite and like didn't tell people what was up. So she did not hypnotize me. And I told her she did. I you I don't think people understand how many people lie to therapists. Yeah. I used to do it all the time. The therapist I'm with now is the only one that called me out of my shit. Like life shouldn't be this hard. Yeah. I need to figure out what's going on. And then my friend Marcy was like, I have a therapist for you. And she she's the one who found me my therapist. Yeah. And I met with her and I was like, I like her. I, I feel like I can trust her. Mm-hmm. And I, I felt comfortable just telling her things. Yeah. So that and that's so important. I think a lot of people and this is why 12 step programs work, too, is that as mm-hmm. soon as you tell someone something and they don't go, Ugh, you're yes. a monster. It yes. releases shame. Yes. Or as soon as someone relates to what you're saying. Uh-huh. And when we say our fears out loud, the fear all of a sudden dissipates because yes. your frontal lobe engages. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's not just about what they're doing. It's just being able to talk to someone who's not going to judge yes. you or hold you, you know, captive for mm-hmm. all the secrets you're telling. Forever. Yeah. And then after an hour, she goes, bye bye. Yeah. I, she you're cares not, about me for that hour. You're not a monster. Nice. You're not disgusting. Yeah. Everybody does it. This mm-hmm. is totally normal. You're not a weirdo. Yeah. The thing I liked the most was in our first session, she was like, so why do you want to be in therapy? And I was like, to change into a better person. She mm. was like, well, why would you want to change who you are? And I was like, oh, because <laughs> uh, I'm broken. She's like, well, are you broken or do you just have issues that you need to figure out how to work with or or uh, make them work for you? And I was yeah. like, oh, Okay. Yeah. Essentially, it was like, you know, we're all clay and you mold into what you want it to be. And sometimes we over pathologize, especially for perfectionists, you know, or whatever inner bully comes up. Mm -hmm. Um, When I went into 12 step programs and therapists for the first time, um, I wanted to be the best at it. 
I wanted yeah. to win. I wanted to be the yeah, most you fucked win up. Therapy. I wanted to be her best client, uh -huh. her most fucked up client. <laughs> I wanted to be her favorite. I wanted to be the most unrecovered person uh -huh. in 12 step programs. <laughs> and then I like got competitive about it. And then I was like, I'm totally over pathologizing myself. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not that big of a deal. Do you still go to 12 step? I do, yeah. Yeah. My therapist, uh, she was like, 12 step and Al Anon is good, miracle. even if you don't have it's an addiction. She was like, you might figure out some other sort of addiction. That's right. And I did try to go to an OA meeting once, and it was just a little too much. It's a lot. <laughs> it was a little much for me. Yep. I might go back one day. Yeah. But it was just, it was a little, <laughs> a little too much. I want to circle back to that. I first want to say the reason I decided to stay with my therapist is I was talking about an ex mm -hmm. and was just like, you know, persevering about it, constantly obsessing. And and she finally went, we're done. Oh. No more. Because you're just reinventing the trauma. Ah. Like you're blowing up this narrative, making it bigger than it is. Uh -huh. Like you talk, like now you have to not talk about it for 28 mm -hmm. days. So there oh. is a happy medium between talking about things and sharing mm -hmm. and then oversharing and obsessing. So she was like, you're an obsession. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to need you to not talk about this to anyone for 20 oh. days and see what and happens. And did it work? It, miracle. Because I also needed someone mm -hmm. to just like liberate me from Yeah, just be like, you don't have to. Because the more you overshare with your mm -hmm. friends, then they're going to keep asking you about it. Then you have to keep talking yes. about it. Then you're still in your obsession. Mm -hmm. So her thing is all about restraint to pen and tongue. Don't share this with all your yeah. friends. You don't have to tell everybody everything. I'm learning that. It's a hard one. Because it's like, well, I, I like to talk about my life on stage, so why wouldn't I tell my yeah. friends this? But then lately I've been like, well, why don't you just keep some things to yourself? Mm -hmm. It's a way of self-care. Yes. I I remember, like, I was in an airport once and this person came up to me and was like, how's your knee? And I was like, mm -hmm. "What? oh God, I told someone about mm -hmm. that on a podcast. You know, mm -hmm. it's just the what we put out there in the world we then have to live with forever. Yes. And then people like that yeah. and you're like, what? What do you do? I have oh, any boundaries? I do yeah, I have it's... any concept of keeping? You know, we have to uh, protect our energy and we have mm -hmm. to protect our future selves. You know, I, you know, talked a lot about like addiction, love addiction, and anorexia in the book I wrote, mm -hmm. and I don't regret doing it. But I do sometimes with the amount of people that come up to me and want to talk about it. Sometimes I'm like, yeah. oh, no, I've moved on. Yes. And they're like, but I just. But I just found it. And yeah. I want to talk to you about oh, it. No, but It's I'm like, well, that's why I have the book. Yeah. Just you read the book in your house. <laughs> in house. And you, you, you leave it in your house. When you're healed. But then part of a 12 step program mm -hmm. is being of service and going, oh, oh right. There's still people who are sick and suffering. Uh -huh. And I wish there was a book out there of someone that had talked about this mm -hmm. and I would go talk to her in an airport. And this is the only person that sees me. Mm -hmm. So it comes with a responsibility, but there is a little bit of a pressure. Oh, absolutely. Like a lot of people I posted on social media, like any questions for Nicole? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people wanted me to ask you about like how to love yourself mm -hmm. and how you're comfortable in your body. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I feel like she hears this question constantly. Oh, and I don't even want to ask her. You can. This isn't my passive aggressive way of asking. No, no, you can. But it must be exhausting. It is exhausting because it it's also insulting to to see a like a fat black woman be like, "How on earth does she look in the mirror and be okay?" It's like, well, if I wasn't, then I would be so miserable. So why not look in the mirror and choose to like what you see back? Yeah. And if you don't like it, you could change it. Like, people are like, you're so body positive. I'm like, not really. Yeah. I'm just truly like, do what makes you happy. If you want big lips, go get big lips. Yeah. If you want to change something on your face, change it. Go for it. But, like, if you don't have the means and you yeah. don't want to, like, you don't have to. You can just choose to like what you see. Yeah. And then... I used to look at myself naked. Uh, uh, an old acting teacher was like, look at yourself naked. And that's the type that that are. person get me to <laughs> with them in the room. Or are you alone? He was in the room. <laughs> he was under my bed. And I said, do you like what you see, daddy? No, he was to <laughs> do it alone. Because he was like trying to get you comfortable with yeah. uh, typing, typecasting. Yeah. yeah. And he was like, if you don't like what you see, wow. change it so you're a different type. He's like, when you first start out, you will be typecast. Yeah. If you don't want to play these parts, change what you look like. And I was like, that's pretty solid advice. Yeah. But also like shitty advice at the same way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I, yeah, I think you, you love what you have or you change what you have yeah. and then you learn to love that. I do, though, feel like there's a little bit of a, there was this moment a couple of years ago where everyone was like allowed to be vulnerable. And all mm -hmm. of a sudden it was like super interesting to like talk about your flaws and be yes. like, I don't like this about myself. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm insecure and I have this. And, uh, and then I feel like in the last year now there's like a bullying about like you're not allowed to self-deprecate. <laughs> 
And you're like, wait, yeah. I just, I thought we were admitting uh-huh. our flaws. I thought we were allowed to say we're insecure and mm-hmm. I have a zit. And now everyone's <laughs> like, well, that's your setting a bad example. Like self-deprecation yes. is now over. I, it's so confusing as to what you can and can't do. Like I spent maybe like a good six months, eight months trying to figure out how to tell fat jokes. Because I would get on stage and be like, I'm fat. And everyone would go, no! And I'd be like, well, come okay. on. You, like, you can't lie to me. <laughs> I heard the stage creak when I stepped. Like, I'm a bigger lady. And it's okay. I'm fine with it. I didn't leave my house to go, I'm fat. And have everyone go, no, you're not. And I go, yeah. great, let me go home. I just, like, let me tell the jokes. And it took so long. And then I figured out I have to tell the jokes in a way as to how the audience views me. Interesting. Yeah, it was just like, it was a lot of like mental Olympics to get there. Yeah, it's it's just kind of like a wild time. Although in terms of the self-deprecation thing, like I get the point of like, we shouldn't degrade ourselves unnecessarily for a laugh, but yeah. also we're allowed to, I don't need you to feel sorry for me. Yes. If I see myself a certain way and you also don't get to decide how I see myself like correct there's a little bit of this moment in like body positivity where there's and you know I'm pretty open about like having eating disorder having had eating disorders mm-hmm. now I have what we call disordered eating because we're never totally oh. out of the woods we don't say what's disordered eating? we don't say we're cured like you never say I'm cured for my uh-huh. eating disorder because a lot of eating disorders come from sexual abuse mm-hmm. they come it's really an addiction to control stuff like that so sometimes it's not even really about mm-hmm. food it comes it goes it's kind of like whack-a-mole with your addictions uh-huh. you know you fix this thing this comes mm-hmm. up you fix this thing this comes up it kind of just moves around mm-hmm. so it really depends on where i am in terms of my like over committing or if uh-huh. I'm in toxic friendships kind of like stuff mm-hmm. like that it'll sort of come and go but um they d- discourage saying like i'm you're cured uh-huh. it's sort of disordered oh, you okay. know which is sort of like you know, for me, it was really more just about like, I just thought about it too much. Mm-hmm. There was the obsession of what did I eat and what am I going to eat and da da da. And then I was mm-hmm. just had a very dysmorphic perception of my body. But a lot of people, there's this blaming of Hollywood mm-hmm. for the standard of beauty, which I'm, I'll blame it all day long. But mm-hmm. a lot of people get their body stuff when they're kids before yeah. they've read Vogue. I fully agree with you. My mother was on a diet, I think, since the day I was born. Yep. She was always like, on Weight Watchers, I went to Weight Watchers meetings as a little kid. Yep. Uh, my grandparents are island people, and island people, for whatever reason, are obsessed with weight. <laughs> they are th- truly; it is their bread and butter. <laughs> no pun intended, but they're just like, <laughs> "Why are you so big? Yeah. Why are you so small?" Like I was always too big. My sister was always too small. Nobody was ever okay. Yeah. Uh, so I, that happened before I ever. This was before people had the tools to know that's going to leave a mark. Yes. I try to forgive that generation because. Mm-hmm. I feel like we're the first generation with even a modicum of understanding Uh of, hey, when you say things, your kid hears it. Yes. You can't say reckless shit like that. Also, kids are smarter than we all think. I always say kids are stupid, but it's a joke. People get so (laughs) angry when I'm like, I hate them. They're like, how could you? I'm like, it's it's, a joke. It's kind of a joke, but like also like uh, badly behaved children. I do not like. And when you're in planes as much as we are, you understand why we have that. Yes, they're bad. Uh, but I handed out candy at Halloween and I told this little girl, I said, well, don't you look fun and smart? And she went, oh, thank you. And then as she was leaving, she went, that's my favorite house. And I was like, oh, because nobody ever tells little girls they're smart. That's And right. they like it. Yeah. I met, um, oh boy, I'm going to mispronounce her name, but she hosts Top Chef Pad, Pad, Pad <sighs> Benton, Benton, on Pad, Pad, Padma. Uh? Padma, I'm not, and I cannot out of this. <laughs> pronounce her last name, and I feel very terribly. But I met her daughter at the Emmys, and I told her she looked fun and smart, and she went, more people should tell little girls that. I was like, well, you are a little girl. Yeah. <laughs> and this is very astute of you. I, yeah, my brother, uh, I have nieces that are really gorgeous, mm-hmm. and, sw- and I just, I don't, I'm around them, and I'm just like, don't say anything, don't do anything, mm-hmm. don't look at your phone. And then when I'm eating around them, I'm like, eat the whole plate. Like, I, I get, I just am so terrified of screwing it's them up. hard. But what you can do, which I learned when I was around uh, my nieces and nephews, is you can say that you've made a mistake, mm-hmm. or you can say, you know, that helps me a lot mm-hmm. like when I'd get insecure I would say something me and my brother would joke mm-hmm. around and we're too caustic with each other I would go like oh I don't really mean that sometimes I'm insecure and I make jokes mm-hmm. and it's coming from a place oh, of see, fear yeah and then they're like okay like mm-hmm. just giving them more credit yeah, and not lying understand shit all we do is lie to them yeah. and all we do is pretend like I mm-hmm. remember watching my parents pretend to like each other and I knew something was going <laughs> on I knew it I was like there this doesn't feel real this, it feels this like isn't real bad acting a bad long-form improv show oh, that I would not buy so tickets to funny. I'm good 
because we have like this gut reptilian mm-hmm. instinct. And then what kids end up doing is they start doubting themselves mm-hmm. and they start going, I must be crazy. Mm-hmm. I must be stupid that I don't understand what's going on. I'm the weird one. But they are stupid. They, do you not want kids? No. Really? Just never have? N- no, I used to want kids. I used to want eight children. Oh, um, very specific number. I know. Well, eight's my favorite number, so okay. I was like, might as well have eight kids. <laughs> uh, and I picked out a name for one of my children. Oh, it was that? Starlet Jade Rosemary. What an ugly name! Oh, that's an ugly name. That Star Starlet Jade J- Rosemary. I think that's a beautiful name. Do you? I also want to name my first kid Rocky. So I'm not a. I like good Rocky. Person. Rocky's I like Rocky. Good. I like boys' names for girls. I like. I like names. that. Yeah, Stormy. Good. Stormy. I don't know what Stormy. It's kind of a. You can't. Yeah. Why not? Stormy Cummings? Come on. It's a Jenner. <laughs> you can't right. name your kid after a Jenner. And so why did you decide you didn't want kids? Oh, I was a if... nanny for about two and a half years, maybe three years. Yeah. So even getting paid to be around them. Yeah, I was nap. like, oh, no. Yeah. Because I would take a nap when they would nap. And then sometimes I was like pretty good at like waking up uh, before them. Mm-hmm. But sometimes the little boy would wake up before me yeah. and I'd wake up to Nicole. Can I have Chobani? He only ate oh, Chobani yogurt. That's all he ate. Okay. I had to fight with him to eat like a hot dog. Okay. Chobani. He loved blueberry. He loved raspberry. Not the plane. He hated <laughs> oh, the plane. I, I love this. Kid. I love the plane. <laughs> the, really? the vanilla, I think, is so good. <sighs> I once bought one like... of those giant tubs because I was like, I'll never get through this, but you better believe I did. I, think I loved it. Tastes, it. That tastes like cummy spit to me. I, yes. Uh, that's, that's why I, I like it. it. It just reminds me of what could be. I had this wild thing where I think I always just assumed I was going to have kids because mm-hmm. I'm that's what I'm biologically designed to want sure. and socially constructed to sure. be, need to do or else I shouldn't exist. I'm a monster or a sociopath. And then I was like, OK. And then I finally was like, wait, I don't think I want to have them. I think I would adopt because, uh-huh. like, I rescue dogs, and I feel like having your own kid at this point is kind of like buying from a breeder. <laughs> like, wouldn't I rescue a kid? Uh-huh. And then my dad died a couple years ago, and I had this biological urge that was like, I need to make a copy of him. Oh, interesting. And then all of a sudden I started thinking about kids again. When my dad died, I was like, close up shop. Stop up that uterus. Done. I don't want him. Because you were think on some level afraid of like more pain coming your way yeah because if i have a kid i'm gonna die that's right and then that kid will be so sad that their mother died <sighs> my so I don't, a I don't parent's death changes you yeah. on such a fundamental level yes and it's the only thing we know that's going to happen for sure in our mm-hmm. lifetimes but the only thing i was completely unprepared well nobody prepares you for it no one just yeah. goes one day it's going to happen and yeah. then you have to do so you have to be sad and then you have to settle their estate and then no like, one warns you about no, the paperwork no. and the logistics. It's so much fucking paperwork, and it's expensive when somebody dies. It's expensive as shit. And, and my dad didn't do anything when my mom died, so then they were all like, well, next to Ken is his wife. I'm like, she dead, too. And they were like, what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, here's her death certificate. As, it, as if you don't have enough emotion <laughs> to deal with. Now I need you to yeah. sign these papers uh-huh. and decide yeah, how it's his body's going to yes. be transported. And then that's so, ex- cremation is so expensive. To burn a body is like you thousands think of dollars. that would be the cheapest yes. part of the whole thing but you have to buy a casket to then burn somebody burn in. somebody in another thing people don't tell you about when death happens is it's fucking gross yeah it's gross and mm-hmm. there's a bo- and it's the person that you love more than anything uh-huh. and there might as well have vultures be picking yeah. out there and you're just like this is so raw yeah, it's i went into an existential crisis it's bad nothing matters i turned it into a total nihilist yeah but one upside to it, and this is how I'm going to circle back to the 12 step program thing. Okay. A lot of the things that I went into a, stri- a tw- strip, we're going to talk about that too. Let's I'm already thinking, thinking about asking you about stripping, clearly. Another thing, uh, a lot of the reasons that I went into a 12 step program mm-hmm. kind of magically clicked into place when my dad passed. Maybe it's because I was so sad and grief just mm-hmm. makes you, a lot of your codependent shit goes away because mm-hmm. you don't have the time or energy to take care of anybody yeah. else's feelings. So I went into. A 12-step program because I, you know, define myself through other people. I define mm-hmm. myself through my productivity. I uh, had a basically couldn't tolerate the discomfort of others, mm-hmm. put other people's needs before my own, was in a bunch of relationships with people I had to rescue or save, was always in a dramatic mm-hmm. situation, but always saying, I don't like drama. But like yeah, people who say they don't like that is- drama. 
live live for it and love drunk. Get it in my veins. Yes. Get it in now. Really? <laughs> and uh, I always would victimize myself, give too much to people, mm-hmm. so that then they could never possibly reciprocate in a way uh-huh. that felt equal. So that I would recreate my childhood circumstance of being a victim. Da, da, da. Oh, Couldn't dang. say no to people. Mm-hmm. Was overcommitted. I was doing stuff for free, left and right. Every charity event in Oxnard, I was there. I'm at the Ice House. Mm-hmm. I'm hosting every show. I could you not do say- perform a lot for the amount of other work that you do. <laughs> it's kind of in- every time I see you, like at the improv, I'm like, I don't know how she's doing this. Why can't she just? This say is no? crazy. Because I'm scared, <laughs> consumed with fear of failure. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Italic. I really love this brand. Yeah. I am not joking. This is makes me so happy. Italic cuts out brands and retailers to sell unbranded luxury goods at insane prices. There's lots of stuff for both men and women from luxury handbags, wallets, cashmere sweaters, bedding, bath towels, cookware, even water bottles from the best possible manufacturers in each category. I hate when people have giant logos on their shirts. Me too. I why are you advertising for this company? You b- paid for the shirt and now you work for them. Yeah, unless you didn't pay for the shirt. Well, that's a whole other in conversation. In which case, you don't deserve it. I just it makes me nuts. Like, why do I work for you? Why does it have to say your company across my chest? It's not for me. It makes me insane. We neither of us ever yeah, wear brands. Yeah, I hate it. I don't want to be a walking billboard. But this company, you can get great gifts for your loved ones this year without breaking the bank. Don't show up again with a pair of socks. How dare you? Treat the special person in your life or your BFF with something beautiful. They deserve it. Be smart. Don't pay $1,000 for a logo. Don't be a tool. Don't be a sheeple. Shave. I'm not going to stop. My producer's trying to get me to stop doing this ad, but I actually feel very passionate about that you need to save your money for more important things. Like? Like, did you know fashion is the second largest pollutant in the world? Because I'm shocked by that. Oh, wow. Well, why don't you start your own podcast and talk about that? I read that. You can get sheets from the same manufacturer as St. Regis and the Four Seasons, leather bags by the same manufacturer as Celine and Prada, and even a candle from the same supplier as La Labo for less than the price of a textbook. Sign you up. Will you Google? Get on this for me. No joke. For the first time ever, Italic is offering a credit to my listeners. Use the code Whitney for a $20 credit that can go toward any order over $100 on any Italic products, including bags from the same manufacturer as Prada, bedding from the same manufacturer as St. Regis, or even sneakers from the same manufacturers as Church. Don't be silly. It's all unbranded. It's all ridiculously priced. Don't play yourself. All right, you guys. Benton is very excited for this one. I can't wait. I know. Calm down. Away. Luggage. I already have it. We do. We we have all of it. I, I have all the luggage. They tried to send me some, and I was like, I already got it. No thanks. Away creates thoughtful products built for the way modern travelers see the world. They started with the perfect suitcase, and now they offer a range of essentials, all which will make your travels more seamless. Whoever said it's about the journey has never traveled during the holidays. It's the most stressful, craziest time to be on the road, but Away's products are designed to work and fit together, making travel smoother for the holidays and beyond. You know that I use the backpack. Me too. We have matching backpacks. Well, with different colors. I like the, because uh, you can put your computer in the back. Mm-hmm. And the most genius part about it, I don't even think this is in the copy I have, but you can charge your freaking phone in it. And in the and the There's uh, a charger. Yeah. 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 You can charge your phone with your suitcase. Like, what mad genius. It truly is the perfect thought of suitcase. That. It really is. No, this is the most genuine I've ever seen you. I love it. This we bond most... over all the time. I have both the backpack. I have yeah. the travel bag. You have all the can luggage Can I tell pieces. you my favorite part about it, actually, is that they come in colors that aren't black. Yes. Whenever you go get your luggage, it's always like... 30 black suitcases, and mine is like bright yellow. Yeah, mine's bright red. You can find them right away. Right away. Ah, I love them. I don't even need to read this copy. Special offer. Oh, lucky you guys. For $20 off any suitcase or bag, visit awaytravel.com slash Whitney and use promo code Whitney during checkout. That's $20 off any suitcase or bag. Visit awaytravel.com backslash Whitney. Whitney and use promo code Whitney during checkout. I know I have to say it once because my producer is going to say people don't know how to spell Whitney. And if you guys don't know how to spell my name, I have bigger problems. The world wants you to fail, kind of. Like people, not like the industry. The industry yeah. wants you to succeed. Right. Because everybody wants to be the person who found that person. That's right. And like broke that person. Yeah. But like, People want to see you fall. They want to build you I up love it. to watch you fucking. I love it. Just, it's so crazy. I remember when I uh, was doing a couple TV shows, literally to the day that they got picked up, mm-hmm. I did not hear from any of my friends. Mm-hmm. 
And as soon as one got canceled, everyone's like, what's up? Want to hang? It just was Mm -hmm. like, I was almost relieved when I publicly failed because I was like, oh, Mm -hmm. I get to have friends again. Mm -hmm. Like, people are going to like me again. But I get it. I I understand. But that is so shitty. It is. But I also understand that other people's perceived success can Mm -hmm. be triggering. It makes you hold up a mirror to your own insecurities. And not everyone's out there doing the kind of work you're doing. I guess. Yes. You know. Yeah, I mean, I guess it it did take me a minute to be excited for other people's successes because mm-hmm. through therapy, I learned if I didn't get it, it wasn't for me. That's right. If I, somebody else books it, they get, they weren't looking for me. And then to me, and it's, it's fine. And it's also like I can now basically define my success or failure based on how much grace I was able to have mm-hmm. in letting go something that wasn't meant for me. Yes, and that's it. You know, Mm -hmm. and I used to take it as an opportunity to like hurt myself, you know, and Uh feel bad. And Mm -hmm. I was just sort of like, what a narcissistic thing. Yeah, what do we all do? Yeah. I mean, auditioning and acting is a gambling addiction. It truly is. That's it. And also, if you book one out of every hundred jobs. You're doing so well. You're a wild success You're doing so good. I don't know anything about sports, but in baseball, the best pitchers that make like $40 million a year Mm -hmm. have like an 11% hitting Percentage, batting, per- throwing percentage? I don't know. I'm looking at Fenton. Fenton, You're what is it? Not the person to Fenton. ask. Five. <laughs> I do, though, one thing about grief, because I've talked about it a little bit, that when it happened, I was, thankfully, a lot of things clicked into place. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, June Rayfield actually called me, and she was like, I can't help you through this. The type of pain you're about to go through, it's unimaginable. Mm-hmm. You know, grief is mercurial. Don't judge yourself grieving. But you're going to lose some friends. Some friends are going to become strangers, mm-hmm. and some acquaintances are going to become friends oh. through the grieving process. Because I realized, like, some people did go away when mm-hmm. I was no longer performing or funny or, like, the life of the party because oh. I was sad all the yeah. time. And there were a lot of people that were like, oh, Whitney's sad. This is mm-hmm. boring. This is not what I signed up for. That's so shitty. I signed up for the insecure girl who's always trying to make everyone laugh. <laughs> ah! I was listening to your podcast the other day, uh-huh. and you guys were talking about a date that you went on with someone who was in an open relationship. Yeah. It's always... Oh, this is going to sound so rude. It's always the ugliest people in an open relationship. I'm like, how come you think you can get more? Yeah, you got one. Now, then I, now I you're like, pushing. I guess I'm in the same room with you, so... So what do you... I, I think I'm too insecure to be in an open relationship. Uh-huh. I'm not sure the point. It seems like a, like addiction to you. It seems like a lot of work. Yeah. And... All, one person always seems really into it, and one person seems like they have yes. they're balding and yes. have eye bags, and it, they're not like as into it. It's always one person who's like, "Let's do it," and the other person goes, "Well, if that's what you want, I have to do this. I'll do and it." And they look sad behind yes. the eyes, yes, but they're doing it because they have. And to. I used to think I could do an open relationship because I was like, "When I'm on the road, do whatever." But then I was like, "No, no." I think I'd like to be on the road and call that person and have them want to miss me and want to want me to come home. I'm just unclear the rules. Like yeah. I'm a rule. Per- I'm the person at game night that's like there are rules for a reason. <laughs> like I'm the one that gets really into the rules. An open relationship. I just it yeah. seems like a spreadsheet of rules. Yes. And I'm dyslexic. I it's not for me. I read a Huffington Post. On oh, Ed excuse me. About educated, a learned. a thruple, if you mm-hmm. will. But uh, it was. Two queer people living together with kids, Mm -hmm. and then they introduced a third, a girlfriend, but she's only the girlfriend of one of the people, but then the other one is best friends with that person, and then she also helps raise the kids, but she doesn't live there. She only sleeps there sometimes, and I was like, wow, it seems like so much work. It seems like a lot of work. And uh, I maybe check back with me in 10 years. Yeah. When maybe. I'm like, wait, my nanny's kind of cute <laughs> and you're helping out. Like, I, I get. Yeah, you should fuck because I'm there. tired. <laughs> yeah, because I'm gone so much. I mean, I have a sex robot of myself. And I was like, can you just <laughs> have sex with this while I'm, oh, I get it. That's what this open mm-hmm. relationship is. Do you yeah. see that more and more I in dating? Or was like... it always just more hidden before? Not hidden because there's always people being like, we're a couple looking for our unicorn. <laughs> Uh, which is like so depressing what does that mean just like looking for our third our magical person who will not get attached to us but fuck us oh, yeah. mm-hmm. and it's usually a very ugly couple and you're like I wouldn't fuck either of you let Wild. alone both of you like two twos doesn't equal a ten yeah <laughs> <laughs> like what is this numbers Correct. game? Correct. Uh, That's a lot of Tinder. I see a lot of Tinder 
people are open relationships. Yeah, Tinder is honestly the manifestation of depression. <laughs> like, it is so sad to open up Tinder and start swiping. I went on there recently because I was, like, doing some whatever thing. And, I mean, there was a guy in a black rubber suit mm-hmm. with, like, a, a thing, like, an auto asphyxiation, <laughs> like, that straight-up David Carradine <laughs> shit. Like, I was like, damn, like, that's a yeah, wild some opening people picture. people let it all hang out. Good for you. A man messaged me recently. He was in a bunny costume, and he said, I want to hop on your face. And I was like, I don't know what that means. Do you want to stomp on my face, or do you want to sit on my face? Are you trying to be cute because you're a bunny? What's happening? I don't like guys in, uh, this is maybe very um, old school of me. I don't mm-hmm. like guys that wear, co- I don't like guys that dress up as babies for Halloween. <laughs> I don't like any of that infantilizing <laughs> shit. I like a man in jeans uh-huh. with calluses. Hell yeah. Like neck hair. Yeah. Straight up. Eh, I'm pretty open to any old person. Because when I see someone in a costume or something, like mm-hmm. all I can picture is them putting it on. So if a guy's stepping into a co- bunny, co- I'm picturing him being like, "Yeah, I can't, I'm now. I'm not as sexually attracted to you." Yeah, I mean, he wasn't attractive to begin with, and then the bunny costume made him look insane. I want to do this um, thing with you because okay. you're so um, in this area. You have so much good insight. This is Who made these? This is so professional. Is this a? Look this at is this. so. Cars. I can't even this handle a, this. This is a real a three show. Three camera setup. <laughs> tons of bottles of liquids. Uh, a candle and cards. <laughs> this I is love a real this. show. I love I'm it. Nine years late to the podcast game. <laughs> I mean, I've had it. There's good money. In There's good money in podcasting. I had no. I mean, clearly. Yeah. Look at this candle. It's like a fifty dollar candle. Is it? And you we're it just free? burning it. Yeah. You get it for free. That one I bought. Oh. No, that one I did buy. Oh. I do like buying things that are expensive sometimes just for the shame hit. I, and to feel bad. Well, here's the thing. If you make a ton of money, you can buy a couple of expensive things. I sort of have the, um, it's like a, it's a shame cycle where I'll buy something that's a little bit too expensive and then I'll return mm-hmm. it. Oh. Because I'm like, it's, I'm going to lose it all. It's all going to go away. It could I, go away in any second. Anytime I get a job that pays me a decent amount of money, I mm-hmm. take 10% of that Love after. It. So like I cut it in half to pay my agent, my lawyer, everybody out. Right. And then I take 10% of that half and then I buy something with it. I love that. I try to, because my dad, he used to be like, Nicole, once money is gone, it is gone. So I hear that all the time in my head. Do you think you have a healthy relationship with money? Mm, Yes and no. Mm -hmm. I'm bad at watching it. Yeah. But like, I know that I can't possibly spend more than I make. Right. I, and I talked about this uh, on another episode, when I first started making money, I was like, I'm rich. And then the tax mm-hmm. man came and I mm-hmm. couldn't afford my taxes. Yeah. So I, I now have a bank account that's mm-hmm. separate and I take 30% of it oh. in check so that I never see it. That's smart. Because I never have it, so I don't want to see it because mm. then it feels like I'm getting robbed at the end of the year. Yeah, I just cut it in half and then in my brain... I keep a running tally of how much I've made that year Mm -hmm. just loose in my head. Mm -hmm. When I look at my bank account, I'm like, that's not real. What of the things that you buy brings you joy? What works? I really love my house. Oh, that's a huge one. Um, And I'm currently decorating it. That to me is the most, the best use of money is your space. Yeah, I really love it. Uh, I left it unfurnished for a year because I bought it and then was like, what if I never work again? Yep. I have that every night at two in the morning. It was a little insane, but then it's like, oh, you can sell it. Yes. If you need to, you can just sell it. I don't want to because I love it. Um, And then... uh, Bags, bags. Really like bags. Yeah, but there's something about bags. They hold your stuff. They, Mm -hmm. you know, they keep you safe. They keep you organized. Like that's a good investment. I feel like. Yeah. So I want to do this thing that my therapist had me do when, um, because dating. Yes. Is hard. It's the hardest thing I think in America. But one of the hardest things for me is when you get neurologically wrapped up in somebody. You meet someone. You're attracted to them. Dopamine, oxytocin, mm-hmm. epinephrine, mm-hmm. serotonin. Who's Effie Efron? <laughs> Padma. That's her last name. <laughs> Phenylethylamine. There's all oh. these neurochemicals I learned because I, I freaking had to learn about neurology when my parents had strokes mm-hmm. and addiction uh, because I have so much addiction in my family. And I started realizing, like, you make a really bad choices when your brain gets flushed with all these chemicals. Yes. They call it the internal drug cabinet. And oh. you don't think straight. And then you have given two years of your life to a psychopath. I want to know, this is something that my therapist really made me 
sit down and write out because okay. I was getting in really bad relationships because out of either fear mm-hmm. or desperation or because the neurochemicals, lust, passion, whatever. Um, I want to make a list of your musts in a person you're dating. Okay. Would be nice. And then red flags. Okay. Okay. Um, and then I have mine, the actual list that I first wrote. It happens to me in my book. This is embarrassing. I promise I'm not promoting my book right now. I just. Yes, you are. This is the only. And that's okay. I'm, no, I'm not going to show it. I'm not even going to show the cover. This is not well, promoting it. But you know, we all know you now have a book. <laughs> Thank God it finally came up. You, you can promote it. No, it's here and you can't even see it because I put this in my book because it helped me so much mm-hmm. to just put down what the bottom lines are, okay. which is the language we use in 12-step programs, of things that must happen in a relationship. Okay. Not budging on this. Like, what do you, what is one of your Like, must? trustworthy. Oh, yeah. That's a must. That's good. Put that trustworthy. Up. Not negotiable. No matter uh-huh. how hot they are, no matter how sexy they are, how much dopamine you're releasing, trustworthy. If someone lies, it's a no. Um, consistent. I wrote that down for some reason. I think that because uh-huh. I'm touring and how inconsistent our mm-hmm. lives are, I wanted someone Someone who reliable. has like a consistent thing going. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I wrote, not a comedian. I mean, yeah. Not a comedian. But then also, I'm okay with a comedian? I don't know. I've never dated a comedian. Neither have I. Isn't that weird? Yeah. They're always like instantly like brothers to me. Yes something just not sexual yeah. about it to me. I yeah, I don't really find a dude who needs to be funny sexy. Yeah. Which sounds awful? No, it is what it is. You don't have to judge yourself. It is Yeah, what it but is. I'm like, I guess I don't find me sexy? No, no. It's also a reptilian thing. Like I once was madly in love with a guy. I hate this about myself. Human nature is sexist. I'm sorry, biology is sexist and mm-hmm. cruel. <laughs> And he tripped and fell in front of me, uh-huh. and it was over. I hate myself. I beat myself up for it all the time. Don't. Biology it is happened. shallow and awful. But also, it might not have been biology. It might have been like, you just were not into him, and that was the thing that you were like, oh, well, blame it on this. Yep, that sort of broke the spell. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, no, 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 thank you. Oh, thank you for making me feel better about that. I've been carrying that guilt for no. years. Uh, anytime you just arbitrarily don't like somebody for something stupid they have done, it's you didn't like them in the first place, and you were just trying to figure out pinpoint it you're like oh this this is this is why i don't like you that is huge because i think that women we uh, bully ourselves into staying in relationships mm-hmm. and going well you're just shallow and like you're so ungrateful no you just don't like that person and just call it and that's and, okay it's the nicest thing to do for them yes get out of there it's mean to pretend and lie to someone i like for people to have money money that is a huge and one it sounds shallow and vapid but like I like to go on a vacation. I work very hard. That's right. So if I have like 10 days free, I want to go somewhere. And mm-hmm. it'd be nice if you could go with me. Yeah. And I think, especially since you're successful, or just having someone at an equal level, because if mm-hmm. you start paying for them, in my experience, it starts to become like a maternal vibe. Yeah. And it's not And then sexy. your mommy. It's gross. That's and you're like, incest. where's daddy? <laughs> daddy in the home. <laughs> I have financially responsible. Mm-hmm. I wasn't brave enough to put has money yet because I didn't, you know, I wrote uh-huh. financially responsible. Uh, I wrote homebody like me. <laughs> I was trying to get very specific. I mean. Do you have any other ones? Um, let's see. Must, must, must. Self-aware must I wrote. funny to me. Funny to you. You don't have to be funny to everybody. I love that. That's a great one. Like, you don't have to be the life of the party, but, like, you have to be able to make me laugh. Because I think life of the party, I learned, is kind of a red flag. Charm. Yes. Needing too much attention. Yes. You're Ted Bundy. That's <laughs> so true. You're going to just fucking murder me. Uh, and then doesn't take himself too seriously. Yes. I wrote, good taste in clothes. Yeah. Well, honestly, Ooh. that's, I'm literally wearing leopard print Crocs. <laughs> So for me to say you have to look good is me being just like lying to myself, but like dressed fun. I like yeah. someone who dresses, maybe you wear mismatched patterns mm-hmm. and you are wearing fun Crocs too. My Crocs literally say good pussy. Like I do not take myself seriously at all. I like to giggle. I wrote has a passport. Yeah. You yes. gotta be that specific because to yes. me- I don't need to go to uh, Italian villas with your passport. But it it's was, the fact that you have yes, it. Yes, that you were proactive enough to have it and it's valid. You have your shit together. Yes, because when I didn't have a passport, my shit was not together. together. Correct. I lost my passport because I was 
holding a purse that was too heavy when I was drunk. So I put it down on my staircase in the hallway of my apartment building and went to my apartment. And I was like, that's the thing that was going to make it lighter? Removing the passport. No, no. I left the whole bag. Oh. The whole bag was too heavy. And my passport was in it. And I was like, I'll get it in the morning. (laughs) And then, of course, in the morning, it was gone. So I didn't have a passport for a long time. And I kept telling myself, who wants to travel? (laughs) I'm falling more in love with you every second. Hold on. (laughs) I just choked. Oh, no. (coughs) Oh, no. It's because you're drinking healthy green juice. I know. No, this is a green juice that... um. Oh my God! What's it? I don't think I stirred it well enough. Alana Glazer, name drop, uh, <laughs> turned me on to this. It's called Active Greens, uh-huh. and I eat like trash, so I try mm-hmm. to drink this at night. And it's supposed to have a lot of vitamins in it, and my body's totally rejecting it. Yeah, your body doesn't want it. Are you dying? <laughs> Are you okay? Uh, Please don't pass away it's tonight. Okay, I always cry around this time at night, so this is perfect timing. <laughs> um, okay, now I want to do your would be nices. It would be nice, like not. N- Necessary, but would be nice. A big old dick. <laughs> o l e, not o l d. O l, yeah, big o l e. Big old dick. Uh, a hunger for pussy. <laughs> I put goes to sleep the same time as me. Oh, because I don't. I we have such weird schedules, and I'm sometimes yeah. nocturnal. And some t- if a guy goes to bed at 10 and I go to bed at 2 and then he wakes yeah. up at 6 and I wake up, at- it's just like, ugh. I, I think I'd be okay with that because I'm a pretty dead sleeper. I don't know. Live your life. Do whatever. This is really as sad. As long as you, like, hang out with me sometimes at night, <laughs> you know? That's – I have um, – reads books. Oh, it's a dark time. <laughs> My bar was very I mean, low. The things I was asking. Outdoorsy. Oh. Not close-minded. Okay. Good relationship with family. Yes. I think because I've had I think that's good for me, too, because I don't... I love my family, but, like, my family... truly, I'm not successful to them. (laughs) And, like, my cousin came to one of my shows, and she said, the audience seems to really like you. And I was like, that's not a compliment. They paid money to see (laughs) me. I was like, that just means you don't like me. And that was a way that you... And, and again, I don't have to be for everybody. I don't give a shit. Why don't we do some red flags? Okay, a red flag. Red flags are important. I talk about this a lot because I think not enough of us heed red flags when we see them. Mm-hmm. We paint them a different color. Uh, you go out too often. Go out too often. Yeah, like somebody who needs to be out every night like of the, the week. Like at the club? Yeah, if you go to clubs. Okay, out too often. That is a pretty big red flag. Um, If you constantly talk about... Other women. As in exes or just women in general? Both. Like Mm. women in general, exes. I I assume already that you have had someone before me. Mm -hmm. You'll have someone after me. I don't need need to hear about them. Mm -hmm. That sucks. Especially if it's pejorative. I think guys sometimes think that we want to hear them call their exes psychos or bitches. No. It's a red flag. Never one time in my life have I wanted to think about you fucking somebody else. Not great. Yeah. Some good. Uh, Another red flag. How do you feel about guys that wear makeup? I don't mind it. I actually bring it on. Men should try harder to look better because men walk around looking like nasty little dumpsters and, to quote Clueless, we're expected to swoon? Like, no. Look better. Yeah. Look better. We were just talking about this the other day because I've noticed a couple of my guy friends wearing makeup but Mm -hmm. not applied well because Mm -hmm. they haven't been trained or studied this and they just look like they have fucking caulk (laughs) and grout on their, like white out on their, (laughs) I'm like, at least you got to blend it. Go to Sephora. Yep. There is no, like my my roommate, John Milheiser, he gets very upset on podcasts where I don't say his full name. So I live with a man named John Milheiser. John Milheiser and I went to Sephora and he was very much like, fine, this, 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 and this, because he was getting stuff for auditions. Yeah. And I was like, John... Let the lady show you how to apply it. Yep, yep. Get the correct brushes mm-hmm. so it doesn't look super cakey so you That's get right. like a little natural look Because we can see. You yes. guys maybe can't see, but yes. the trained eye mm-hmm. knows when something's not black. He is also, the first time you put on makeup, you're a baby. Like, I wasn't good at putting on makeup in the beginning, mm-hmm. and then I learned. Yeah, it has to be within the vicinity mm-hmm. of your skin tone. Yes. It might be a hate crime. Yes. Pull it together. Yes. Because I think Please guys... don't go out in blackface. Please. <laughs> There's a red flag. Blackface black is a big red flag. <laughs> Past, current, yes. all of it. Any blackface or brown face. But wh- why did 
Justin Trudeau's go from being blackface to brownface in the news? Because I believe it was an Arabian Nights themed party. Ah, but that was shoe polish. Oh, was it? It was pretty black to me. I don't remember. I just I remember it, was... it being blackface, and then the news was brownface. And I, was like, I think maybe lawsuit? one was blackface and one was brownface, because I think there was multiple. Why? He doesn't want to have to pick. I like that he's <laughs> commitment phobic about He was like, I'll do all of the ethnicities. It was also wild how well it was applied. It was like right well, up to his... Well, when you're going to be racist, you, you better really, commit. You really, he hit it out of the park. You got to commit. Like I'm like, he's done this many times. Probably. And not had photos. It's so interesting to me that people still do blackface, even in like the last ten years. Like you don't you you just don't know how offensive that is. You don't know that in like you're old putting time it on, movies. So that, many that's... times to change your mind. Yeah. So many times you can change your mind. Still doing it. Still doing it. So weird. So many times to go. Yeah. To go. Wrong. This is bad. Dark. Well, that is a red flag. Uh huh. I put. Um, ostentatious. That's Ooh, weird. That's good. Tells me to relax ah. or calm down. I uh, see. I could use someone to do that. I wrote in a band. <laughs> that is a red flag, <laughs> unless it's like a band that's doing well, or they're like, I play in a band and this is purely a hobby, and I like doing this. Yeah, on I do it for me. Yeah. As opposed to like, one day me and the boys are gonna make gonna it. get to Vegas. I don't know. I don't know where bands aspire to go. I think I said that because I feel like I'm a little bit too hard on people in bands, but I think it's because there's a lot of travel involved and I travel sure. a lot. So and you're that, truly looking for a stationary person. Basically. A real I anchor. want an actual basket case okay. with no arms and legs, mm-hmm. but who is still actually alive. Mm-hmm. Ooh. So wait, were they just carrying around bas- baskets of men in the... Uh, I guess they were. I don't or- know. I need to go into my comments at all the people that attacked me about it, because it was apparently a big thing. Like, excuse me, can you please specify how these people were traveling? <laughs> they were being carried in baskets. Um, I, I think a handle. I do like the idea, though, as I think of, like, the, is it etiology or etymology, like the origin Et- of a word? Etymology. That it turned into basket case meant crazy, because the basket cases were acting crazy. And well, it's really uncalled for. Yeah. I mean, if I didn't have arms and legs and someone said, but we're going to put you in a basket and that's how you're going to travel, I would feel a little <laughs> I'd be crazy a little bossy. Too. I'd be like, I can't even have a wheelchair? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Can you not even just like swaddle me or yes. put me in a backpack something. or something? I put, uh... yeah, put me in a backpack like that Yoda backpack that they have at Disneyland. <laughs> uh, people will probably get mad at me about that. This is one that I actually think is pretty good. Same day plans. Is that a red flag or is that spontaneous and fun? I think that's spontaneous and fun because mm-hmm. I do things like that. I think because I dated a bunch of people who like I was like their third person they'd ask, oh. or like if someone canceled. No, if I'm dating someone, you're the first person that I'm coming to with a Looney Tune idea. Right, I like that. This is good. Out too often, talks about other women, blackface, brownface. <laughs> yep, uh, it's a pretty good list. I think you know so. yourself very well. And it's therapy. You don't see that a lot. It's it. It is such a fucking refreshing breath of fresh air. That, those aren't two things that should go together. <laughs> and since you're so uh, clear in this area, the last thing I want to ask you about is are your friendships because yes. you have such incredible friendships. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people I know are I wouldn't say stuck in some unhealthy relationships, mm-hmm. but I do think that that's the one area we kind of don't think about. We're like, well, this friend causes me stress and, mm-hmm. and makes me feel bad. But like, you don't like break up with friends. You just my therapist once when I was having issues with a friend, she said, what are her redeemable qualities? Mm-hmm. And I took too long. And she went, well, there you go. You, that took too long. You should be able to just list the qualities you like of a friend. And then I said, well, we have a lot of history. Mm. And then my therapist said, just because you have history doesn't mean you have to stay with somebody. This is friendships, relationships, everything. And it's okay to move on from a friend. Um, So the people who treat me nice, who Mm -hmm. are kind to me, who love me, who make me feel good, those are the people I'm friends with. And have you ever had to, like... I've broken up with friends. And did you do it or did you just fade away? Well, I explained... the. There's one specific friend that I just explained. I was like, I can't uh, continue being friends because it has not been good for me in the last couple of years. How'd that go? And it went okay. Um, There's still, like, sometimes a little reaching out back and forth. But, like, on my end, I was like, for me, I don't wish to be rejected by you anymore. And I don't wish to make 
I don't wish for our friendship to be so far on the back burner that I feel like you never think of me anymore. Yeah. So I was like, I'm done. I'm done reaching out. And it, it sucks. Because you felt like you were chasing the person or you were the, always yes. the one to initiate yes. and make plans. Or, yeah. yeah. Or I would say things about like their significant other who wasn't great and ended up not being great. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then... That's the hardest. Yeah. And then I learned, oh, you can't really tell anybody about their significant other. Nope. At all. Ever. That is, I, where were you 15 years ago where I did this all day long? Uh-huh. I was the person that was like, I heard that he's yeah. cheating. You and can't do it. No. No. Well, you shut your mouth. If he's cheating and you know it, you, you shut go your to mouth. your grave with it. You shut your whore mouth. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Because yep. also someone who's, it's just going to drive a wedge between yes. you two. And when you're in a relationship, you can't see it. want it so badly can't see that it. you're just not going to see no. it. No one has ever been in a relationship. They were happy about it. Had someone go, hey, I heard mm-hmm. this thing. And they were like, oh, thanks oh, for telling thank me. thank you. I guess I'm done. Yeah. No. no it has to run its course. you're just the bridesmaid that everyone talks about. They're like, she talks so much shit about him. I can't believe she showed up. And you're like, I don't want to be that person. And you're also meddling in their journey. Yes. Give them the yes. dignity yes. of their yes. own experience. Let let it play out mm-hmm. so they can learn something. You're robbing them of a lesson. Yes. And I mean, I've had I've had very kind friends. I dated somebody on and off for years who was terrible, who <laughs> constantly hurt my feelings. And I would tell them stories, and they'd be like, well, you know what I'm going to say. And I'd say yes, and then we would move on. And they wouldn't say it. Yeah. They would just say, you, you know what I'm going to say. Yeah. I do know. Thank you for listening to me. Yeah. Thank you for not actually saying what you want to say. Yeah. And we can move on. It's just radical acceptance of where you are yes. in that space. Yeah. And like most of my friends were very good about that. Yeah. I mean, after like a year of it, you're like, well. <laughs> it's hard to watch someone hurt themselves. Yes. It's when you love someone, it's one of the hardest things mm-hmm. in the world to just go, I have to radically accept this person's yeah. choices and mm-hmm. let them go through whatever they need to go through. You know, but I, I have had to draw boundaries with friends where I go like, I just don't think I can hear about it anymore. Yeah. It, it's it's I want to be able to be of mm-hmm. service and I want to be able to love you. But I uh, the last thing you need right now yes. is to have a friend who's resentful yes. of you, you know, so mm-hmm. I just need to draw a boundary. And there had been friends where I was like, OK, I don't talk to you about this anymore. Yeah, that's I'm really just, important. I, I get the I get the feeling. Like, yeah. I don't want to hear about it. Last thing I'm going to ask is um, any great advice you've gotten that you think people deserve to know because this podcast the idea is it's good for you mm-hmm. and we're trying to pass on things that are good for you advice you wish you had heard earlier now. um to for women to ask men how much they made doing the same thing you're doing wow and even if you're making the same amount ask for more wow because usually people have more money wow you opening offers are just that they're opening offers. And the worst thing someone can say to you is, no, I'm not going to give that to you. But the best thing that can happen is you ask for more money. You raise your quote. The next job you have, that's your quote. That's right. So if you're not going to pay me what I was paid in my last job, then I guess I'm not taking this job. And it's OK to say no. And it's OK to seem like you're a bitch because you know what you want because you're not a bitch. You just know what you want. That's correct. Yeah. It was a, a long time. Like I had a manager once. uh so there was an email. So I had a show on MTV called Loosely Exactly Nicole. And they were like, let's, uh, I want you to, we want you to live tweet it. And I was like, well, if I live tweet it, I'm tweeting it to like people who follow me. That's like asking someone who's in my house to come to my room. How do we get people to come into the house yeah, who aren't yeah, in my house? Yeah. And they were like, oh, oh. And then like, we had like a pretty good discussion about it. And then after we got off the phone, my manager called me back and was like, I think you should apologize. You really seemed, you know. And I was like, what? He was like, you know. And I was like, like a bitch. And he's mm-hmm. like, well, you said it. And I was like, no, you implied it. I'll apologize for, you know, trying, like, I I was like, I'll apologize if you think that's what I should do. But I truly phrased it in a way where I was like, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry for wanting to promote my show as hard as I can. I'm proud of it. I'm not sorry for speaking my mind. What am I supposed to just go, oh, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm." I was like, that's not how you navigate a career. That's not how you navigate life by just being um, meek meek and uh, a bystander in your own life it serves no one no it serves no one and again the worst thing they can say is no yes and also yeah I, that's been so hard for me for so long because i'm like i don't want to ruffle any feathers because mm-hmm. i'm already lucky to be here it's like no i'm not no you're I'm not, not lucky there's to be a here. reason why you're there like i was on a shoot today i won't say what but they <laughs> we started early and then at like one lunch hadn't happened mm-hmm. and i was like where's lunch yes i was like you can't call us this early nope. and then not feed us no nope. and they're like it's outside and i was like so it's ready and nobody said oh, anything yeah. that is disrespectful that's right 
And That's then right. one of the other people was like eating really quick before we started to shoot again. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm not saying a word until you finish your food. This is stupid that you have to rush to That's eat right. your food yeah. to get what? And to get out of here 20 minutes earlier? And to Let me, them fucking eat. The bitchiest thing I can do is not stand up for myself because then I'm going to yes. do uh, worse work. Yes. And then you, this isn't going to go to yes. series or, or be good. Yes. And then you'll be upset in the edit. And... That's right. I'd rather be a bitch yeah. now so that you like mm-hmm. me later instead of you like me now and yes. the product be bad later. And then sometimes people think I'm a little too curt because I'll tell a director, give me a line read. Yeah, uh, we can. I don't I need don't, to do nine takes. I, I don't want to guess. I did it the I don't three do a pop times. Quiz. I thought it was good. Yeah. If you didn't think it was good, then you tell me exactly how you want me to mm-hmm. say it, and I'll do it. Yep. I don't care. I already did what I thought it was good. Just that tell didn't me. Work for you. Yeah. And then some directors are like, no, no, I don't want you. And I'm like, ah, just now you're tell treating me. me like I'm a yes. baby, mm-hmm. and you're infantilizing me and acting like I can't yes. handle constructive criticism. I fully criticism. can. I'm fine. I've yeah, noticed this a little bit in the last couple like years with you know all the good things Me Too has done, but now everyone's treating me like I am like mm-hmm. made of glass. Everyone's like, are you okay? I'm like, uh-huh. I'm I'm okay. I'm fine. There was like I had to do a sex scene. Everyone was like, you don't have to. I'm like. It's written in... No, it's in the script. And literally, we have to do it. And they're like, only if you're comfortable. I'm like, okay, now you're just yeah, treating me... Yeah, that's insane. Now you're treating me like I'm going to sue everyone, and I'm yes. an irrational monster yeah, there's like who's an, a liability. It's an overcorrection. That's right. It's like, just don't be... I learned some Me Too stuff, so I thought it was funnier <laughs> in my early 20s. I think I got my show when I was 25 or 26 or something. Uh, maybe old enough to know better, but at, like <laughs> on Mondays I go, "How's everyone's weekend? Did we all fuck?" And then my friend was like, "Nicole, that would like that would be like if you walked into your job at a bank and your boss went, "How's everyone's weekend? Did you all fuck? Count the money." And I was like, "Oh, that's not what but we're comics. This is what yes. we do." But she was like, "That's she's like, so maybe you might want to stop doing we that." Used to and I was go like, around, okay. I had a show on NBC. We would go around and stick our fingers in each other's butts, mm-hmm. like <laughs> pants. <laughs> We'd all just run around and finger butt each other. I yeah, mean, it's wild. You can't do that now. No. No finger butting. No, there was finger butting. There was swiping people's butts, <laughs> like a credit card. Like, there was, I mean, mm-hmm. there was everyone's, uh, uh, we used to Photoshop people's heads on naked mm-hmm. bodies and put them all over the wall. Like, I mean, <laughs> the shit we did was wild. I nailed I'm it. Sorry. I now have to say to contestants, uh, I'm a comic. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I work blue. That's just how my mind works. And then I work backwards to get something clean. Yeah. And it's been exhausting <laughs> because people watch the show with their kids or whatever. And then they get to the set. And then I'm like, oh, that cake looks like a dick I want to slam down. <laughs> and put it in my belly and then shit it out. I don't know. Uh, and then it's like someone's grandmother who's like, no. So now I have to like just warn them. <laughs> it's, it's weird because uh, the first two seasons, nobody had seen it yet. Right. So I, it was, and then also they didn't know what the show was going to be. So I was just doing whatever. But now that it's like a thing and kids like it, <laughs> what's going to happen? It's been very jarring. People love that show. They really do. Does that feel good? It does feel good. Uh, it feels good that, uh, cause a lot of the, the moments that they really like have been improvised. So like it's just oh, fun God. that people like my weird. I have a weird sense of humor. How was the Emmys? My God, it was so cool. You've been, right? You looked amazing. Thank Not you. For, to be nominated for something. No, but like going is so wild. Yeah. You're so close to the most famous people and you can touch them if you want and make it seem like an <laughs> Not accident. Not on their butts. Not, Not on their butts. butts. Not on their butts. Don't do it. Were you scared at all or nervous? At the Emmys? Yeah. No, because I knew we were going to lose. I just was- uh, Did you write a speech? No. We were definitely going to lose. Why? Because we were against RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh. Also, I'm not a producer, so I wouldn't have gotten an Emmy. Oh, got so it. So I don't. Yeah. I think I would have just gone up there and like stayed in the back. Oh, got it. I love you, Madly. Thank you. I love you. What are you gonna do after this? I just want to know the next hour of your life. Oh, okay, I'm gonna drive home. That should take about 25 minutes. Uh huh. And Sorry. then I'm gonna pack because I gotta go to Philadelphia tomorrow. Oh, Philadelphia. Where are you playing? This won't be out then. But let's. Uh, where? Uh, Parks the- Casino. I've oh. never done a casino before. Oh, it's so fun and weird. I'm really excited. It's going to be so weird. It's so many people that have just like, lost a bunch of money and they need to laugh so bad, but they're also kind of miserable and Pat mad. Oswalt has a joke about it where he's like, they just screamed my resume at me. <laughs> I was like, I want that. I don't want to tell a joke. Just yell at me. <laughs> and what are we, where else can uh, everybody find you? On Instagram at Nicole Byer, on Twitter at Twitter. Um, 
And I have shows? a book coming also- out. No way. I have a book coming out May 19th. And you wrote another book? I No, I, this is my is first book. Is this your first book. book? Yeah, it's called Hashtag Very Fat, Hashtag Very Brave, The Fat Girl's Guide to Being Brave and Not a Melancholy, Dejected, Weeping Fat Girl in a Bikini. Down in the Dumps. It's really luck. <laughs> Oh, but you have a picture book too. What? Don't you also have a picture? That is the picture the book. The same. Okay. So it's essays I it was and different. pictures. Okay. It's a self help book. Let's see if I can get it right. Hashtag very fat. Hashtag very brave. The fat girl's guide to being brave and not a melancholy, dejected, down in the dumps, weeping fat girl in a bikini. I got it. It's a lot. And when does it come out? Uh, May 19th, 2020. Yes. You're going to do a big book tour on the whole deal. I don't know. Maybe. You should. When you does should. this come out? This comes out in like two weeks. Um, I'll be in Portland. Ooh, fun. And then I'll be in San Jose. So just like go to. Oh, good. I love San Jose. <clears throat> I think I've only been once. Oh, that's one of my favorite venues. A man almost hit me with a car last time I was in San Jose. I'm sorry. And then he stopped just short of me and leaned out and said, you, almost nailed it. You sure he wasn't flirting? No, he was trying to make a joke by almost killing me because he leaned out of his car and said, almost nailed it. San Jose, you just lost me. Yeah, it's I bad. was defending your city. It was bad. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't kill me. <laughs> I'm so hot. I'm so warm, too. Do you not have <laughs> air in this room? I didn't want to fuck up the audio. Oh, Nicole Meyer, I love you. I love you. I'm sweating. I'm profusely. sweating. And I have to pee-pee again. Yeah, I have to pee. I have to uh, de-sweat. Oh,